so I can stop stressing about it. But they go when they want to. Today is Cal Appreciation Day. So what better day, way, to start the day than checking the cows? Hmm. Is there Timothy out here or they already ate it all? It's a warm season. Mm. The brome is. Yeah. <sighs> They're underneath the shade tree. There's still a lot out here though. They've knocked it down a lot. I have to come over and brush hog it, even it all back out. No rider. They look good though. Hello. I know. He looks happy. Hello, ladies. Send her on up. Hello, 16. Okay. Yeah, she's close. Keep her moving on this hill and she'll have it sooner or later. So we are taking this cow and her baby over and up to the chute so we can take her to the vet. She is showing signs of a torn udder. So uh, we have to take her in and have her look at it antibiotics and whatnot so you guys get to tag along for that good girl Go for a swim. Come on. <laughs> Good girl. Yeah. Huh? Yes. So life on a farm is never what you expect nor plan for for the day. Came over to move cows, check on one, and found another one that we have to deal with. Um, when I started my YouTube channel, it was very much that I wanted to show you um, my farm life through my eyes. and. Um, not really always sugarcoat things because farming is hard, having livestock is hard, um, it's emotional, it's frustrating, it's a passion, um, and today you guys get to see a little bit more what goes on um, besides behind the scenes, um, that it's not always happy cows, happy life, happy life type thing. Uh, we do have situations that arise and that are out of our hands so that we have to call in backup, aka the vet, or whatever situation may arise. So you guys get to tag along for that. Uh, thanks for giving thumbs up and shooting me comments and subscribing. We are well over away to our 1,000 uh, September goal. Uh, I think earlier we were right under 700, so that was pretty exciting. Uh, I'm going to finish walking these two ladies up the hill and put them in the makeshift pin, and then we will go get the truck and the trailer and haul them off to the vet's office for some antibiotics and so on and so on. So I will try my best to show you guys some of that stuff. Um, I can't show it all, obviously, because of YouTube rights and uh, the vet's rights and all that business, but I will show you what I can. Well, I know, good girl. We're gonna get it fixed. So that's the ruptured part of her udder. And she got flies because of it. So we're gonna take her to the vet's office and they'll flush it and get it all taken care of for us. And of course we get to take the baby with us. 
it's hot. They're hot. And now I'm waiting for Jason to come back across the creek with the truck. Hey girl. <sighs> We're just gonna walk the water, fence line up to the water tank, get her drink, and continue walking. Get you a drink, big girl. Did you turn the fence back on? No, but we gotta make sure the mulings are in because there's a place in the fence up there that it's sagging. Okay. I don't know if one got out or what. All right, we'll check them. Let's get this situation adjusted and go from there. I'm getting two others in the mix. So uh, we have six, 10, 18. Uh, since we're going to the sale barn for the vet, we may just end up taking the two cows that we have to call out six and 10 anyway. <sighs> so we're just camping out and waiting 20 minutes or so for Jason to go get the trailer and come back and we'll load the girls up and take them back to the barn. And then we'll reload and go to the sale barn. While today didn't go quite as planned, this is exactly why we check cows every single day. Uh, sometimes I check them twice, sometimes Jason checks them twice, just depends on who's around and who's free. They always, always get checked. Um, if we don't check them, then problems arise and then they go unnoticed and then that's how herds get sick or they have issues or they even die. Um, during calving season, we're out here two to three to five times. Um, during the heat, during the winter, I mean, there's not a day that goes by that none of these cows are looked at um, just the way our what works for us so as I've talked about before cows do get moved periodically with the rotational grazing system majority of them we can hand feed treats I mean you see me I'm out here walking there is a bull out here I am not zoomed in I am literally Right behind them. Hey, hey, hey. Easy, Sky, easy. Sky! Come on. You are such a nice heifer. Ride her down. Good boy, good boy. And that's all it takes. I'm just gonna move them right down the lane. For the day. Many of you are probably wondering about this little Holstein here. He was a bottle calf and one of my ex hey, rider down. Um, other late rider stop. One of the other first time heifers lost her calf and I had this one at home and I kind of did a transplant type thing. I rubbed the placenta of the dead calf all over what well, Jalen has deemed hay bale, this whole thing. And first time heifer took it, and uh, we're gonna wean it with these other show me select cows in this group, calves in this group. So they just kind of all stay together. So that's the little backgrounding on hay bale, the Holstein rider. I do have the healers out here. Ryder, Ryder. He is only six months old, so he's still very green and still learning. Sky's behind me, because obviously I don't really need her, so she's just kind of listening and letting him do his thing. He's learning. And that's how easy it is to move cows. Bringing those two cows to pull out um, from the pasture. Since we're already at the livestock, 
stock barn anyway it's made more sense because it was two that we needed to pull out anyway and we're making one stop so while this day has not gone entirely as we planned aka we had no hay mowed yet but we got the hay carpeted home and we got two cows off that we need to sell so we're not completely out um just needs now tomorrow we'll come down and watch them sell and uh, the bud's also here, so we will show you as much as possible. I'll show you as much as possible um, regarding the other issue. It's hot, I know that. Uh, 91 with a UVI of 8. At least the wind is blowing and uh, they're calling for a good chance of rain this afternoon. So, fingers crossed. The rain will come in and uh, cool things off for at least a few days and I can play some ketchup on some other stuff. Okay, so this is the cow that we had to take to the vet earlier. Um, what I'm going to do is, I've already stripped her of her milk this time, um, just have to kind of work her through it. And then we're going to put the uh, moxa mask up in the teat, take it off, and just kind of plug it up in there and push it in. And I'm going to do this two times tomorrow and then again on Saturday morning. And uh, hopefully she'll be better. But she's got it real bad in this first quad, some in this second, this other front quad, but her back quads are doing okay. And that's it. Oh, that is exactly why we have to maintain distance. Uh, I'm going to go walk down and check the horses real quick. They're back here in this back pasture right before the woods, so I just want to make sure they're doing okay since it has been so hot. They have water, they have shade, but I like to make sure that they're back there. Um, we did just take care of 18, obviously. Um, I am not a licensed vet. We did go to the vet's office. They showed me what to do. Um, they gave us the antibiotics to treat it with, so we're all learning together. I hope you guys liked today's video. It was definitely a learning experience for me. This was the first case of mastitis that I've treated here. Um, I don't remember it from when I was a little girl helping on our family farm and with other farms. So thanks for tagging along and we'll see you around.